President Buhari Hill's Minister of Justice expresses concern over non-usage of recovered assets. Those who have been left behind will look up to you. And I hope that you will then move them from those who have been on the sidelines to the mainstream. Federal government moves to reach out to rural communities with electricity. Plus, the House of Representatives calls for a review of the minimum wage. Welcome to this edition of NTA Network News with me, Muhammad Kuda Wubakar. President Muhammad Buhari has expressed serious concern that critical national assets recovered from persons who abused trust by anti-graft agencies are yet to be fully mobilized and put to effective use for public good. This was when he granted audience to the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Abu Bakr Malami, SAN, to chat the best way forward. Sedas correspondent Adam Musambo reports that President Buhari also received the Group Managing Director of the NNPC, Dr. Mike Kanti Baru. Since the renewed onslaught against corruption by the Buhari administration as one of its fundamental objectives, monies in various currencies and other critical national assets were recovered from treasury looters and those who committed other acts of economic sabotage. President Muhammad Buhari is, however, not happy that despite the remarkable achievements by the anti-corruption agencies, Nigerians are yet to feel the impact of the recovered assets due to pending legislative instruments that can make that possible. And this informed the nearly one-hour meeting with the Minister of Justice, Abu Bakr Malami, behind closed doors. Mr. President is worried that the assets gathered over time by the agencies of government and that are responsible for the fight against corruption are scattered all over the place and embedded in the proceeds of crime bill that is pending before the National Assembly. The whole essence of the meeting is considering the possibility of splitting the proceeds of crime act to take the asset management committee out of it so that it can be given special treatment. Mr. President, as you rightly are aware, is committed to open government partnership, is open to transparency and accountability. So the asset management uh, agency is intended to provide all that by way of having in place a specialized agency of government that will be responsible for the management of all the assets that are recovered through the process of uh, fight against corruption. The minister who also briefed the president on the report of the electoral reform committee submitted to him told newsmen that the Oshimbajo Presidential Committee report investigating allegations of wrongdoing against the suspended secretary to the government of the Federation, Babachir David Lawal, and the director general of the National Intelligence Agency, IOK, will submit its report to President Muhammad Buhari on Wednesday. Also in the State House, the group managing director of the NNPC, Dr. Mike Kanti Baru, briefed President Muhammad Buhari on the state of the National Oil Company, the situation of fuel supply, gas production and supply to power sector, as well as the rate of crude oil production due to relative peace in the Niger Delta. Crude oil production have gone back to 2 million barrels per day. We've gone as low as 1.5 million barrels per day uh, until uh, recently when we uh, got back to this position, uh, essentially last week. So what did the president tell you eventually? Well, uh, he was happy with the state and uh, he's told us to continue with the strikes that we're doing. Uh, and if we need any executive uh, attention, we should not hesitate to come back to him. Dr. Mike Antibaro's meeting with President Muhammad Buhari also took place behind closed doors. From the State House. The federal government has commenced consensus building with experts and critical stakeholders in and outside the government to ensure the successful delivery and implementation of the Economic Recovery and Growth Plan Roadmap. Budget and National Planning Minister Udoma Udo Udoma, who gave the assurance at the opening of a stakeholders dialogue in Abuja, also said Nigeria's debt service to revenue ratio will reduce as the country's revenue increases. Lea Katumba went today has the report. The global economic recovery is gaining ground with an improved world outlook for 2017 and beyond. For Nigeria, the IMF and World Bank have projected positive growth trajectory by the end of this year. However, 
GDP and population growth has not tallied for a long time, but Nigeria is targeting growth to rise by 2.19% at the end of the year in the ERGB. The Minister of Budget and National Planning, Domaudo Doma, is positive that debt will drastically reduce as a coherent and clear approach has been set out to increase non-oil revenues and optimize government spending. Implementation, we're not waiting. It's a continuing process. As we are going ahead, we are implementing. And as we're implementing, we, are, we make adjustments when necessary. The minister says the plan indicates that to achieve sustained growth, the country needs to continue current initiatives aimed at driving fiscal stimulus through a package of spending to stimulate private consumption and investment by businesses. This gathering of wise men therefore seeks to improve partnership for the plan to succeed. It's important that every step of the way we consult get a feedback. Where adjustments have to be made, we make those adjustments every step of the way. In Abuja, Lea Katung Baba Tunde, NTA News. Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Ibi Kachiku, has challenged oil and gas experts and investors to take advantage of the more than 50 billion US dollar investment opportunities captured in Nigeria's oil and gas sector roadmap to advance government's four-year economic recovery and growth plan. This was at the 2017 Offshore Technology Conference in Houston, Texas. Haiwa Salihu Adama reports. A testimony of a reality that despite the recession characterized by uncertainty, Nigeria is on the threshold of an explosion in its industrial development in the sector. Opportunities which Minister of State Emmanuel Ibe Kachiku outlined with a scenario of a tomorrow without oil in mind. Relevance for how we're able to provide the necessary funding uh, for the federal government to survive. And we took the bold step this year of saying to the government, rather than take a loan, we'd like to look internally, working with NMPC and uh, DPR to raise over 10 billion into the federal coffers to strengthen our reserves and help our budget and work far gone in that. And with increased oil production at reduced cost, Driven by genuine leadership topping priorities, critical operating units express commitment to a convergence to reposition the country. Key areas, one that we have already promised the nation that we have to transform ourselves from a, an oil and gas company into a full energy company. The 2017 Offshore Technology Conference holding in the world's oil capital, irrespective of current developments in the oil market, has over 40,000 energy professionals and exhibitors in attendance. In Houston, Texas, I'm Hawa Salihu Adama, NTA News. With the World Bank IMF projection of a promising economic future for Nigeria and other developing nations, it is imperative to adopt policies that will attract foreign investors, allocate more funds to critical sectors, and remove all legal bottlenecks impeding growth and development. Aisha Obali reports that guests on Good Morning Nigeria stated this while discussing the fallout of the recently concluded World Bank Group IMF Spring Meetings in Washington, D.C. While Nigeria was a judge to have made strong case for the development of the nation anchored on the economic recovery and growth plan, guests expressed divergent views on how the nation can walk the talk to enhance the prosperity of Nigerians. Also, the issue of multiple foreign exchange rates must be addressed to attract more foreign investors. And this is why we don't yet have confidence uh, that is required to bring in much needed inflow of foreign exchange that will stabilize not just the economy but uh, foreign exchange market, but also the capital market. We remove all impediments, legal impediments, to allowing private sector participation. Once we're able to achieve that, and we can unlock foreign investment into the infrastructure sector, then you will begin to see that we have somewhat addressed the challenge of how much we're allocating to capital. The non-passage of the 2017 budget to ensure the implementation of government programs was described as a drawback, and this is compounded by poor revenue earnings. So that by the time your budget arrives in November, early December, they would have done three oversight visits and there would be no reason for them to hold our budget for five months scrutinizing budget. Top of really the global agenda and we're hoping very soon that it gets actualized but it can only get actualized if 
uh, issues like the budget uh, are passed on time and Nigeria begins to deliver to its broad spectrum of people. The guest expressed the need to make deliberate efforts in order to achieve economic growth and stability. In Abuja, Aisha Oba Ali, NTA News. The first batch of 1,000 women have graduated from the various skills acquisition programs in Kano State, courtesy of the Future Assured Program of the Wife of the President, Aisha Muhammad Buhari. State House correspondent Aliu Kabir reports that the training which took place at the Women's Center in Kano is aimed at empowering women economically as well as to improve their living standards. The four weeks program is expected to train 2,200 women, and the first set of 1,000 women have graduated within the two weeks of the commencement of the program. It is the train the trainer program with participants cutting across the 44 local government areas of Kano State. The women have participated in cosmetics making such as liquid wash and soap, air freshener and perfume. They also gained knowledge on how to make body spray, body wash and hair cream as well as petroleum jelly. They participated in spices making such as chili and tea as well as curry powder. At least we have about 2,200. The representative of the wife of the president, Ramatu Muktarabu, said the wife of the president committed in supporting women to realize their full potential. She's trying to help the women, especially the widows. The participants are optimistic that with this knowledge, they can support their families and train other women. If not this place now, I will be sleeping in the house for nothing. We can hold ourselves, our children, and even our neighbors. We really appreciate them. She has given them the knowledge that they will go and teach other people. It's not only for their own benefit, for, all, uh, for others' benefit. Mrs. Buhari urged all Nigerians to partner future short program in order to improve the lives of women and children. In Kano, Aliu Kabir, NTA News. Nigeria joins other world leaders at the 27th World Economic Forum on Africa to fashion more effective strategies for inclusive growth. Details with Vivian Idekbefo on Business News. We are glad to have you join us on the business news at this time. How to manage Africa's projected $15 trillion contribution to its economy over the next 30 years will form part of the agenda before world leaders at the 27th World Economic Forum on Africa holding in South Africa. With the theme Achieving Inclusive Growth, Nigeria will also be taking part in the various discussions with specific attention on appropriate policies for investment in education, employment, and empowerment, particularly for women and youth. Meanwhile, Minister of Finance Kemi Adoshun has described small and medium enterprises as critical to broadening the country's revenue base. At an interactive forum in Lagos, the minister said the federal government is building a productive economy for sustainable and inclusive economic growth. The federal government is therefore calling for greater focus on the productive sectors to drive inclusive and sustainable economic growth in the country. And now to the capital market, trading resumed Tuesday on the floor of the Nigerian Stock Exchange after the May Day celebration, with the All Share Index closing in the green with a 0.80% gain. Here is a summary of the price movements for the day. That concludes business news at this time. Thanks for watching. Minister of Power, Works and Housing, Babatunde Fashola, has inaugurated the management and board members of the Rural Electrification Agency. He charged the organization to speedily provide communities with electricity. Hansa Musamagalfi reports that the Rural Electrification Strategy and Implementation Plan was also presented at the event. The government is primarily anchored on increasing access to electricity by about 85 million Nigerians that are not connected to national grid infrastructure, 
in rural and urban areas. There are options open to the government in assorted renewables, small hydro, solar and wind, to generate electricity and promote the total well-being of the people in education, outreach, processing activities, and social services. Rural Electrification Agency, with legal framework outlined in the Electric Power Sector Reform Act, is responsible for all coordination activities and for the first time since inception a guiding document presented. Those inaugurated include Dr. Umar Mazamaza, who chairs the board of the agency, while Damilola Ogumbi takes charge as managing director. Those who have been left behind will look up to you, and I hope that you will then move them from those who have been on the sidelines to the mainstream of connected people by using and promoting all grid connections for them. Chairman of the board pledges commitment to work towards achieving goals of the organization as the managing director seeks collaboration with development partners to drive the agency. But Findings show the Rural Electrification Agency has executed more than 150 projects in 2016. Hamza Musama Kalpi, NTA News. Today, legislature now the Senate is to constitute an ad hoc committee to pursue expedient realization of the Mambela and Zingiro hydroelectrics electric, electricity power projects. National Assembly correspondent Wazir Zayano reports that the Senate decision followed a motion sponsored by Senator Yusuf Abubakar Yusuf from Taraba Central on the urgent need to speed up construction of 3,050 megawatts and 700 megawatts of Zungero projects. Moving the motion, Senator Yusuf Abubakar Yusuf noted that so far 14 billion naira has been expended on the Mambila hydroelectricity plant, which has the capacity to stimulate further development for the nation's sources of power generation. The process leading to the realization of 700 megawatts Zungero hydroelectricity power project have slowly resumed after years of suspension. Chairman Senate Committee on Interior by Ronald move a motion for the report of the Conference Committee on Nigerian Peace Corps Bill to be considered. If we can pass this bill now, they have a legal backing. As it is now, they don't have any legal backing. Is it possible that perhaps if there was illegal backing for the National Peace Corps, that all the issues that have emanated now that have gone to court may not have been emanated? After extensive debate, the Senate President referred the bill to the Committee on Judiciary to consult and appropriately advise the Senate on the next legislative action within two weeks. Under two executive communications, the Senate considered the request of President Muhammad Buhari on the confirmation of the nomination of three non-career ambassadors designate, as well as those of 27 resident electoral commissioners for INEC. The Senate Committee on INEC is now being chaired by Senator Suleiman Nazif Bauchinov. In the meantime, Senator in waiting for Akwai Bomb Northeast, Etim Basi, who came to the Senate ready to be sworn in, went back disappointed. I bring this to the notice and attention of my constituents that I have come and I am yet to be sworn in. From the National Assembly, Waziri Zayan, NTA News. The House of Representatives has emphasized the need for a review of the national minimum wage as the imperative of the times to enhance productivity of workers. This came in a motion of a matter of urgent public importance moved by the Chairman House Committee on Labor, Representative Onyewuchi Ezenwa, as members reflect on the 2017 International Workers' Day. National Assembly correspondent Ignatia Sunko reports. There were other issues that came before the House, also very salient to the economy. This includes the need to strengthen the military and paramilitary forces to be able to meet urgent national demands and conform to global standards, as moved by Chairman House Committee on Army, Representative Remande Shawul Kwewum. Further aware of the United Nations report that out of 80 million small arms floating freely in the West African sub-region, 70% are in the hands of individuals and groups in Nigeria. Representative Goodluck Nana Opia from Imo State moved the motion on the need to make it mandatory for oil companies to establish their operational offices in the Niger Delta area. There was divergent view in response to that motion. And eventually, 
the motion was rejected. The House implored government to embark on the construction of shoreline protection and embankment in all coastal communities in Nigeria, with particular reference to Eastern Obolo in Nakwaibam State, moved by Representative Francis Udiok from Nakwaibam State. Most of the villages close to the Atlantic Ocean are on the brink of extinction. And on the concerns on the challenges of Nigerian workers, members observed that the upward review of the national minimum wage should be given adequate attention, especially now with government's determined drive to revamp the... The Minimum Wage Act that went through in 2011 that created the 18,000 Naira minimum wage be activated immediately. We are committed to ensuring that not only minimum wage is increased but a living wage. In spite of the consensus of the House to support any move by government to improve the welfare of workers, the Speaker was quick to advise the Labour Union on the need to ensure more decorum in the expression of their interests at any forum. This is reflective of the disruption at the 2017 May Day celebration at Eagle Square, Abuja, from the National Assembly. Ignatius Nkwo, NTA News. It will be recalled that in a message to the Workers' Day rally, President Muhammad Buhari reiterated federal government's commitment towards addressing the issue of wages and welfare of the nation's workforce. Adam Musambu now reports. President Muhammad Buhari was emphatic that the federal government is not unmindful of the plight of the Nigerian workers in the face of the prevailing economic realities. He therefore assured them that a new minimum wage committee will soon be set up as work continues on palliatives towards reducing the current discomfort they now experience. The government, he said, will work hard to better the lot of the workers by providing them with commensurate welfare benefits. President Buhari had always reminded the nation of the situation inherited by his administration as it affects wages which perhaps resulted in the series of bailouts given to the state. The first thing that might have shocked you was that um, 27 out of the 36 states couldn't pay salaries. This is a disgrace to Nigeria. It's a disgrace. Up to now, some of the states cannot pay salaries. The Minister of Labor and Employment, Chris Ngige, also at the May Day rally, re-emphasized federal government's efforts at addressing workers' welfare. We are, we are going to address the issue of minimum wage. We are going to also address the issue of uh, backlog of production areas and uh, allowances of all sorts. We captured them in the 2016 uh, budget, but uh, for some reasons, uh, uh, the releases were not forthcoming. But the senior president have assured now that uh, we are going to capture them in 2017 budget appropriation. And once it's captured in appropriation, the Minister of Finance will uh, release the money for those presidents. Nigeria on Monday this week joined the rest of the global community to mark this year's Workers' Day. In Abuja, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. Minister of Information and Culture, Alhajilai Mohammed, has announced a tripartite partnership involving his ministry, the United Nations World Tourism Organization, and global news leader, CNN, to leverage on Nollywood to promote tourism in Nigeria. The minister who announced the plan at the annual general meeting of the Nigerian Association of Tour Operators, NATOP, in Lagos, said that talks are at an advanced stage to forge a strong and effective partnership by using comparative advantage in film production through Nollywood to promote tourism in Nigeria. He appealed to tourism stakeholders to work with the federal government to ensure the success of the 2018 United Nations World Tourism Organization CAF meeting, which Nigeria will be hosting. Alajilai Mohammed appealed to stakeholders to package and promote Nigerian destinations, goods, and services, noting that it will create direct and indirect employment through tourism, grow the economy, increase the national GDP, position Nigeria as an all-year-round tourism destination, and establish a worthwhile, acceptable, and recognizable image of the country among tourists across the world. You can watch this news live online via the NTA mobile app, which you can download on your Android device at the Google Play Store or at the Apple Store if you use devices with iOS. Still to come, 
Electoral Reform Committee submits report after seven months of work. Details of these and more after the break. Stay with the NTA. Change does not just happen. You and I and all of us must appreciate that we all have our part to play if we want to bring change about. We must change our lawless habits, our attitude to public office and public trust. We must change our unruly behavior in schools, hospitals, marketplaces, motor parks, on the roads, in homes and offices. To bring about change, we must change ourselves by being law-abiding citizens. Computer. A B C D for to take answer question. P for preview or back. N for next or forward. Double click S for submit. And arrow for return or reverse. And send or form. Not be six months again, no. Now only one month from March 20 to April 19. But just don't extend registration until May 5, 2017. So that applicant go get the better opportunity to register. And optional mock exam now April 29. Examination now 13 to 20 of May 2017. No more scratch card, yo. Buy your pin at approved banks and waka go any approved jump cbt center for registration no wuru wuru plus mago mago for jump again no if you don't read well well you go fail this message is by joint admissions and matriculation board jam enhancing academic excellence the real estate golden jubilee committee welcomes invited guests and the public to the traditional real estate on 3rd may 2017 it will feature the groundbreaking ceremony of the new real estate council of traditional real estate secretariat complex by the guest speaker his eminence anhaji mohammed saad abubakar sultan of sokoto at the council secretariat 3 at sarama street port Harcourt, at 10 a.m 12 noon exhibition and a lecture theme traditional institutions in nigeria and the challenges of reengineering viable local economists chairman his majesty oba adeyeye eniton oni of the fair then dr obiwali international conference center host his excellency yesom ezewawike con governor of river state sign professor joseph ajinka chairman media and publicity subcommittee and his royal majesty dandison Douglas Jaja, Chairman, River State Council of Traditional Rulers. I can't believe she just rejected me and my camera. She rejected my lights. How can she not want makeup? Maybe when the battery dies, she'll come back to us. Nah, not with a 4,000 milliampere battery. Experience the best selfies of your life. Gioni A1 Super Selfie Super Battery. His Royal Highness, the Emir of Duse, Al Haji Dr. Nuhu Muhammad Sulusi, CON, invites the general public to the tabernacle of Al Haji Nasser Halade Danu Aslan Amanar Duse on Friday, 5th May 2017, by 10 a.m. at Emir's Palace, Duse, Jigawa State. A special dava will come on Thursday, 4th May 2017, by 4 p.m. at Duse 8 Ground. Special guest of honor, His Majesty Professor Theophilus Prince will CFR, Amanya Nabo of Kalabari. Royal Father of the Day, Ova Adeyeye Enitan Ogusi Ojaja the Second, Oni of Ife. Chief Host, Al Haji Muhammad Badara Abubakar, MON MNI, Governor, Jigawa State. Governors, members of national and state assemblies, ministers, and other important personalities are expected to grace the occasion. Announcer, organizing committee.
It is with joy that I have received the ex Her Excellency's gift. I want to say that may God continue to bless and reward her and herself. On behalf of Garuki Hospital, we are grateful. You're watching NTA Network News. Vice President Yemi Oshibayo says the present state of the nation is a perfect moment in history when every Nigerian should seize the opportunity to make a difference. Speaking on the topic, there is light at the end of the tunnel. At an annual event organized by the Covenant Christian Center in Lagos, the Vice President gave detailed progress being made on the Buhari administration's social economic programs. State House correspondent Jide Onifade reports. Participants at this meeting are mostly young Nigerians. Youths in the country are said to constitute the larger proportion of the entire nation, estimated to be 170 million people. Young Nigerians are usually referred to as future leaders. Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo, however, advised them not to look elsewhere as the future is already here. As he says, there are now limitless opportunities open for grab. I, I very strongly believe that this generation, especially of young people, must not allow the failures of the past to hold it down or become an excuse for your own failure. The vice president says the federal government's economic recovery and growth plan, which has four key execution priorities, is completely turning things around for Nigeria and has set the nation on the right path of real growth with jobs. Stabilizing the macroeconomic environment, two, delivering agricultural and food security, three, energy sufficiency, that is, adequacy of power and petroleum products, and then improving transportation infrastructure, driving through industrialization through small and medium-scale enterprises, and of course, delivering an effective social investment program. In almost all the areas he observed, there is good news, which indicates that Nigerians will certainly see the light at the end of the tunnel. Jide Onifade, NT News. Wife of the Vice President, Dolakpo Oshibayo, inaugurates Breast Cancer Center. This is more with Vera in our Lagos Network Center. Hello, Vera. Over to you. Thank you, Kudu. Good evening and welcome to Lagos. Succor and relief have come the way of Nigerian women with the establishment of the state-of-the-art breast and gynecology center in Nigeria. Wife of the vice president, Dolakpo Oshibajo, said the center will not only address several health challenges peculiar to women, but will reduce medical tourism. She said this when she inaugurated the breast and gynecology center of the Reddington Hospital Group in Lagos. The center, which is a new addition to the Reddington Hospital Group, is designed to address not only the clinical needs, but also the emotional, psychological, and physical needs of Nigerian women, who oftentimes are unable to get the required therapies in one place. Wife of the Vice President, Dolako Shibajo, said every woman deserves the care the center hopes to address. It serves to ensure that there is less medical tourism, Nigerian doctors, treating Nigerians with cutting-edge procedures such as first in Africa. The Chief Executive Officer, Reddington Hospital Group, Adeyemi Onabowale, who spoke glowingly of the hospital's many first to include the closure of a hole in the heart by a non-surgical procedure and establishment of an integrated radiography center, said the establishment of the center was informed by the absence of internationally acceptable criteria for addressing women's health in Nigeria. The first hospital in Nigeria to win the Nigeria Health uh, Accreditation Award as provider of the year for the year 2014-2015. Among the many dignitaries who attended the occasion were the wife of the governor of Ondo State, a cancer survivor of 20 years standing, Betty Akeridolu. She asked women to always do self-examination as early detection is key to treatment. The center will also offer other specialized services such as cardiology, general surgery, 
EAI knows and proved. A team of experts from outside the country explain the workings of advanced technologies to the gathering in Lagos, Vieira. The laudable provisions in the 2017 federal budget can only be achieved when the budget is duly implemented by the executive and monitored through effective oversight functions by the National Assembly. This was the view of economic experts at a four-day budget implementation conference in Lagos. The event was organized by Brain Mine International and powered by the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA. Musa Toliet has the details. Event and a former director, public finance, Central Bank of Nigeria, Titus Okuromo said, the quest by the federal government to reverse the economic recession and achieve real gross domestic product growth in the fiscal year necessitated the focus of the 2017 budget on development of critical infrastructure. He emphasized the need for the government to curtail high dependence on imported commodities and make frantic efforts to add value to the nation's crude oil with a view to achieving the projected 1.99 trillion naira revenue from the oil sector. If the government, or maybe working with the private sector, develop the oil industry, then ordinary people will start exportation of the byproducts and government will be getting foreign exchange. Speakers also dwelt on the National Economic Recovery and Growth Plan, which is expected to help the nation achieve macroeconomic stability, promote competitiveness, growth and diversification. The idea is to do a self-approval at the national level with a view to generating ideas on how to improve the situation. Basically because we want to support government, we want to make sure that the reason for budgeting is actually taken care of. The four-day event is expected to shed light on deficit budgeting in Nigeria, as well as trend and implication of a bloated recurrent budgeting for national development. In Lagos, Musa Tolia, NTA News. You are still watching NTA Network News. We have more reports ahead on the news. From Abuja. When we return after this time out, stay with us. Chewing gum neutralizes bad odor. It doesn't just disguise them, it gives you real minty breath. I can't believe she just rejected me and my camera. She rejected my lights. How can she not want makeup? Maybe when the battery dies, she'll come back to us. Nah, not with a 4,000 milliamp battery. Experience the best selfies of your life. Gioni A1 Super Selfie Super Battery. Issues in the sports sector remain one of the most debated among Nigerians. Due to the passion, followership, government's involvement, impact on Nigeria's external image on our national life in the sports parliament. The NTA offers Nigerians deep views on issues with experts in the sports sector, offering in-depth analysis, hindsight, insight, and foresight towards elevating Nigerian sports to the zenith on the floor of the sports parliament. So many things have been wrong in sports. Uh, we've been talking around it. We need performance expertise. And you can only get some of this where you have world-class facilities. How can sports deliver return of investment to attract the kind of money required to take it to the next level? We cannot interfere in the internal affairs of even the federations that belong to us. 
Sports Parliament, a unique platform for sports discussions, showing live on the NTA, Thursdays at 11 p.m. Keep a day with the Parliament Parliamentarians. Your eyes have it. Nigerians. Suicide bombers are not spirits. They are not ghosts. They are human beings like you and me. They live amongst us. They are your neighbors. They are your friends today, but terrorists tomorrow. So you must know your neighbor now. Security begins with you and me. Know your neighbor. Be vigilant. Be security conscious. Report suspicious persons, objects, and movements to the police and other security agencies. The security of our nation is a duty for you and me. If you see something, say something. Nigeria, unite against terrorism. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. Thank you for remaining with NTN Network News. The Federal Government Committee for Constitution and Electoral Reforms has submitted its report after seven months of work. The committee was established to come up with desirable electoral laws. Salih Abdullahi has the report. On the 4th October 2016, the Attorney General and Minister of Justice, Abu Bakr Malami, on behalf of the federal government, inaugurated a 24-member Constitution and Electoral Reform Committee led by a former Senate President, Ken Namani. It is an initiative to effect changes the present administration promised Nigerians in the electoral processes in the country. Public hearings was held across the Federation by the committee in the course of discharging its responsibility. <laughs> Submitting the report to the Attorney General and Minister of Justice, Senator Ken Namani says the executive bills drafted from the exercise are carefully done to update and harmonize previous recommendations. Attached to it are four draft bills on amendment of relevant provisions of the Constitution, amendment of the Electoral Act, establishment of political parties and electoral offenses commission, and the establishment of constituency delimitation center. And volume two will contain copies of the memoranda we received from members of the public. The Attorney General, who describes members of the committee as patriotic servants of the nation for carrying out a comprehensive work on how to improve Nigeria's electoral system, said it is crucial for the government that is working towards building a vibrant and sustainable democracy. I am happy to observe that this committee has made recommendations on how to strengthen the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, the participation of independent candidates, the management of political parties, tackling of electoral offenses. The report is to be submitted to the president, after which the National Assembly will receive its own copy. In Abuja, Salehu Abdullahi, NTA News. The federal government has set up a seven-member panel to assess the status of all projects executed with take-off grants by the last set of 12 new federal universities. Frank Uzama reports that the Minister of Education, Mala Adamu Adamu, who inaugurated the panel, says the move is in line with the federal government's stand on transparency and accountability. The 12 new federal universities were established by the federal government between 2011 and 2013 with a takeoff grant of more than 1 billion naira to each. The grants were to enable the institutions to effectively meet their operational, recurrent, and capital expenditure needs for smooth takeoff. But in recent times, there have been complaints and petitions from key players in the institutions on the utilization of the takeoff grants. This led to the inauguration of an audit panel by the Minister of Education. They are to determine the actual amount released to the National Universities Commission by third fund as take up grants for projects in the 12 universities. Number two, they are to identify and confirm the number of contracts awarded, including contract sums under the take up grants. The audit panel is also expected to determine the amount paid on each project, including outstanding claims. It's not those reports going, going to indict anybody, no. It's a report that we had the system 
to be first of all to identify what has happened and then see how we prevent it to occurrence. And then most importantly for the universities involved, as it's already been mentioned, that there have been a kind of petitions here and there, which means that they must be having the expressions of difficulties. Members have three months to submit the report. Franka Uzoma Olua, NT News. The presidential amnesty program will continue to focus on human capacity projects for the full actualization of peace and stability in the Niger Delta region. Special advisor to the president on Niger Delta affairs and coordinator of the presidential amnesty program, Brigadier General Paul Boro, stated this when he met the Director General, Voice of Nigeria, Osita Okechuku, in Abuja. Adebola Brooklyn Sunday now reports. The presidential amnesty program was designed to disarm ex-agitators in the Niger Delta region, empower beneficiaries of the program, and to enable them to be fully integrated in the society. Acknowledging the power of effective information dissemination, Brigadier General Paul Boro was at the voice of Nigeria to synergize efforts between the two organizations. There is this understanding now between representatives of the Niger Delta people, the government, we are now talking wholeheartedly on strategies to employ towards the final resolution of the issues of the Niger Delta region. So I appeal to the youths, my brothers and sisters in the Niger Delta and the Southeast, to kindly join President Muhammad Buhari in migrating out of the Bazaar era when, like, money is doled out and no project is executed. Over 5,000 beneficiaries studying across the globe are expected to graduate this year. Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. Nigerian Navy takes delivery of specialized boats. Mina in Port Harcourt brings us details. Hello, Mina. Hello, Mohammed. Good evening and welcome to Port Harcourt. The Nigerian Navy has taken delivery of eight specialized boats presented to it for the effective security of the territorial waters around River State. Presenting the boats to the Chief of Naval Staff, Vice Admiral Ibok Ibas, River State Governor Nyeso Wike said his government will procure 13 more of the boats for security agencies in the state. Ogedi Yekwe reports. The donation of the boats to the Nigerian Navy by the River State Government is expected to improve the credence of the Navy on the waterways of the state and the security of lives and property of the coastal communities. Governor Wike said he will continue to support the security agencies in the state, hence the need to collaborate with the agencies. Protect the territorial waters of River State, Boni area, Andoni, the Calabar area, Bile, Soku, we will have a lot of security threats. That is why I say, Chief of Naval Staff, I will support you. The event of today bears a confirming testimony to the fusion of one of the gestures in which the governor promised the Nigerian Navy during one of the induction ceremonies additional 12 boats to complement security efforts within the state. Commander, Nigerian Navy Ship Pathfinder, Commodore Sam Simbura, noted that the boats are fitted with 12.7 millimeter gun, automatic grenade launcher, and 200 horsepower outboard engine, able to maneuver difficult terrains in the water and creeks. From the Federal Light Terminal, One, Oge Dinyekure, NTA News. The issue of political interference in education and its manifest threat to effective school management came to the fore as delegates at the All-Nigerian Confederation of Principals of Secondary Schools gathered in Port Harcourt to brainstorm on how to revamp secondary education in Nigeria. Kingsley Amadjuri reports that former Minister of Education, Ibrahim Shekarao, called for collective efforts to address the challenge. ANCOPS is the umbrella body for all Nigerian secondary school principals who are critical in the administration of secondary education in the country. Aware of their critical role in the development of secondary education, the five-day conference will also provide participants the opportunity to review current trends of indiscipline in schools 
issues and challenges. At the official flag of, of the conference holding at the Shark Stadium, Port Harcourt, delegates expressed concern about the issues of underfunding, policy somersault, lip service by some government authorities, absence of training for teachers, calling for urgent steps by government across the nations to address the rot in the educational sector. River State Governor, represented by the Commissioner for Education, Kanie Beku, was delighted with the theme of the conference, which examines political interference in education and how to address the challenge. Now, all the issues raised in the various addresses of the national president of ANCOPS, as well as the state president's address, have all well been noted. The choice of the theme this year is relevant, and it is our prayer that at the end of this Congress, recommendations and observations will come out that will show the way. The essence is to brainstorm, equip, prepare our principals for the challenges above. Some of the outstanding members of the association from the six geopolitical zones were conferred with the Principal Emeritus Award, PEN. A community is expected at the end of the conference in Port Harcourt, Kingsley, Amajiri, NTA News. That's a contribution from Port Harcourt. Mohammed, it's back to you. Thank you, Mina. The 2017 Workers' Day was colorfully celebrated in Kano with a renewed commitment and effective service delivery from the organized labor. Abdullahi Mustafa, who witnessed the event held at the Sani Abacha Stadium, reports that it was also an opportunity for Governor Abdullahi Ganduji to unveil his future plans for workers in Kano State. History has it that Workers' Day was first celebrated and declared public holiday by Kano State Government in 1980. The 2017 celebration was attended by representatives of various trade associations from the public and private sectors. After the traditional march passed, three junior civil servants and former labor leaders were honored in appreciation of their commitment and selfless service. Also, prompt payment of salaries and allowances by Kano State Government was equally acknowledged by the labor leaders. They are particularly happy with the settlement of inherited salaries liability to more than 5,000 workers. Release of circulars that improve the welfare of workers, such as removal of dichotomy between HND and BSC holders, new scheme of service for nurses and midwives, recognition of health workers with BSC health education, amendment of pension and gratuity law on tenure system for permanent secretaries and directors at state and local government levels, etc. I wish to use this occasion to express our appreciation to the entire workforce in the state for the solidarity and support and understanding to this administration. Governor Ganduje, who commended Kano workers for their commitment, assures of better welfare package to enhance productivity. In Kano, Abdullahi Mustafa, NTA News. This is NTA Network News. We have developments around the world and sports news when we return after the break. Workers' productivity under the change agenda in focus on this week's edition of Tuesday Live. NTA Tuesday Live. Decisive, informative, and educating. Don't miss it. The National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAVDAC, is working to ensure access to safe, good quality essential medicines with the World Health Organization pre-qualification of Made in Nigeria pharmaceutical products, stiffer penalties for fake drug offenders with a review of NAVDAC laws, national, regional, and international collaborations, cutting-edge technologies, including the mobile authentication service. NAVDAC impacts upon everything we do, including water, we drink, 
the food we eat, they are important organs to the development of this country. And everybody should come out and join them and support them and help them to achieve the greatest benefits and success that they need to record. Let us support NAFTA to win the war against fake drugs and other unwholesome regulated products. NAFDAQ, safeguarding the health of the nation. For developments around the world, Chimdi Martin WC has the global tidbits. A report released by Oceans Beyond Piracy indicates that armed attacks on ships operating in West African waters have increased. Pirates attacked 95 ships in the Gulf of Guinea in 2016, as against 54 attacks in 2015. Also, in place of cargo theft, it's discovered that pirates now focus on kidnappings with 96 crew members taken hostage. The report puts the total economic cost of this maritime crime at almost $794 million. And the United Nations Children's Agency, UNICEF, has estimated the number of children suffering from acute malnutrition in Somalia to be at 1.4 million. Consequently, they are nine times more likely to die of killer diseases, which are widely spreading. In another development, the United States military has confirmed that its third missile defense system is now operational in South Korea, with capacity to intercept North Korea missiles. That's Global Tidbits, Chimde Martin Dubisi, NTA News. And for the sport update, here's Kene Emma the federal government has congratulated British professional boxer of Nigerian descent, Anthony Oluwafemi Joshua, who recently defeated Ukrainian Vladimir Klitschko to become the unified world heavyweight champion. In a statement issued, the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, said Nigeria is proud to be associated with the new unified world champion, whose Nigerian heritage he has publicly acknowledged. The minister said the government will soon invite the new world heavyweight champion to Nigeria, especially as he has said he is looking forward to giving something back to the country. The ongoing Tom Beams Open Tennis Championship entered day two in Abuja Tuesday with Sylvester Emmanuel crashing out in the first round of the championship. Sylvester, who played his first match on the center court at the Abuja National Stadium Tennis Center, lost in two sets, 6 3 6 4, to Bega Alessandro of Italy. Tennis is like that, you know? Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. It's a win and lose game, you know? Kaduna State's male and female volleyball teams have emerged champions of the just-concluded Northwest Zonu Volleyball Championship held in Guzau, Zamfara State. Benny Adams reports that Kaduna beat Jigawa 3-0 to lift the trophy, while Kada Queens of Kaduna emerged victorious after defeating Jigawa and Kano State by 2-0 in the female category. Please food boost to be a champion. So once again, I want to say thank God for the strength and everything and want to say congratulations to ourselves. Kaduna and Kano State will represent the Northwest in the National Youth Games. Nigeria Super Sand Eagles Monday crashed out of the group stage. Good to have you join us on the weather segment. I'm Misa Helen Boye. We'll expect cloudy conditions over the north down to the inland cities with prospects of localized rain showers around Port Harcourt axis. Later on, we'll anticipate partly cloudy conditions over the northeastern region while localized thunderstorms are probable over the northwestern flank of the country. Thunderstorms are likely over the central cities down to the southern states. Next is temperature forecast. Thank you for watching and bye for now. And that concludes NTA Network News for tonight. Thank you for watching. Good night. I'm <laughs> sorry.